so um, about a month ago, the Westminster Anti-Terror Police released a statement that they have since retracted, which basically says to report anybody uh, who professes to be an anarchist to the police. Now, uh, this is exactly what they said. Quote, Anarchism is a political philosophy which considers the state undesirable, unnecessary, and harmful, and instead promotes a stateless society or anarchy. Any information relating to anarchy should be reported to your local police and police. Now, uh, like I said, they've since retracted the statement. And they've said that the reason why they said that was not because they wanted to, you know, round up anybody with a certain political viewpoint. It's because people professing to be anarchists have caused damage to uh, all sorts of property, presumably at protests and the like. And I should say, I was originally not going to do a video on this, as you can probably see, given the time frame between that event and this video. But uh, the more I thought about it, uh, and the more articles and even videos that I've been seeing on this subject, it's become somewhat clear to me that this is an opportunity, uh, an opportunity to correct these kinds of misconceptions about anarchy. And I'm not the first person to uh, see this opportunity. There's a website called uh, Libcom, which has published an article doing exactly that, which I'll put a link to in the down below bar. It's called Anarchists Are Like Tories and Other Misconceptions. And the misconception I want to deal with here is the one that anarchists are terrorists or they're just like, fuck government, and, you know, just like flipping cars over and breaking whatever they want to do and that kind of thing. And I just want to say I don't think that any of the people who do in fact do that, which, don't get me wrong, there are people who are like that, but they don't have a clue about anarchist theory. If you were to ask them who the founders of anarchism were, they will almost certainly have no idea. However, the question remains, why does everybody associate anarchism with terrorism. Well, probably one of the reasons is because the word anarchism, even though it literally means without rulers, had been used even before Proudhon started using the name. They had been using it to kind of mean a chaotic state of affairs. And this hasn't exactly died out. So I think everybody still has this in mind, that all that somebody who advocates anarchy would be anar advocating chaos. And that's not what it's about at all. However, uh, there's an, another reason which has to do with anarchist history itself. There was a time during the late 19th century and early 20th century which saw the rise of a dogma in anarchism called propaganda of the state. And this is usually the interpretation of a quote by Mikhail Bakunin, which states, quote, We must spread our ideals, not by words, but by deeds, for this is the most irresistible form of propaganda, end quote. And the idea was that Anarchists were to lead by example and basically assassinate uh, leaders or steal things that they thought had been uh, already stolen by the ruling class 
and the idea was that that would get the masses to start thinking about anarchism and start uh, revolting themselves. Needless to say, uh, that didn't happen. And no, almost no anarchist today actually believes that. It's simply no anarchist who actually know anything about anything about anarchism advocates this propaganda of the deed idea. However, there is one other reason, and that's the fact that the media isn't exactly helping these already ingrained prejudices based both in the history of the word anarchy and the example of propaganda of the deed. Whenever somebody causes damage, the media has a strong tendency to jump on that and call the people anarchists. For example, in the 1970s and the 1980s, there was a gang basically called the Red Army Faction, and the media would always label these people as anarchists despite the fact that the Red Army faction was explicitly Marxist-Leninist. Explicitly. I mean, <laughs> the media in this case, at least, is incredibly disingenuously referring to a terrorist group, which is explicitly not anarchist, as anarchist. So, there's a reason why these prejudices against anarchism have held sway uh, for so long. And similarly, even when you do have anarchists, actual anarchists, who are committing these supposedly violent acts, the violence is always, or almost always, overstated. A lot of times it amounts to a few broken windows, but also, get this, it's unequivocally in response to the violence that is being committed by the police and anti-terror squads who are trying to break up the protests by force. And nobody ever refers to those uh, acts as violent. It's always the people who are protesting the government who are being violent here. For example, in 2004, there was a uh, European Union meeting in Ireland. And there was a story that there was a group of anarchists who were planning to use poison gas during a protest at this event. Now, the story was completely fabricated. At the very least, there wasn't a single shred of evidence that any of this was going to happen. And yet, uh, they used this fabricated story as a reason to completely break up, by force, again, the protest that was going on here. Max Stirner has a saying, which I think is right on the mark here, quote, the state's behavior is violent, and it calls its violence law, and that of the individual crime, end quote, from the ego and its own. And I think that really sums up what's happening here. The state is usually defined as an entity or organization which has a monopoly on the legitimate use of force over a given territory. And obviously it is going to skim over the violence that it uses while exaggerating the violence used by people who are protesting what the state is doing. Now, I should mention that uh, at this point I'm not accusing every argument against anarchists of being prejudiced. What I'm saying is that 
most people have a kind of gut reaction against this philosophy, even though they don't actually know what it is. They have certain assumptions about what anarchism is, and this assumption is taken to be representative of what anarchists actually think. And that's not true at all. That's not to say that there aren't thoughtful arguments against anarchism that actually are worth uh, a thought. But there's another point in me making this video. And I want to ask you what your objections to anarchism are. And I hope to, in another video, collect the objections that are made and do my best to refute them and to try to convince people that an anarchist society is both possible and desirable. You can put your objections down in the comments or you can PM me. See ya.